Hello everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you and this will be a continuation of our movie review series around the Mission Impossible franchise. And in this edition, we will focus on the Hoy Octane first sequel, continuing the further adventures of IMF agent Ethan Hunt. And you can check out my reviews of other installments within the franchise and I'll leave some links within the description. So we move on to the second film within the franchise being released on May the 24th in 2000. It has movie superstar Tom Cruise returning in the lead role as Ethan Hunt, alongside Fandy Newton, Duke Ray Scott, Richard Roxburg, Brendan Gleeson and Ving Rhames, and it was directed by revered action filmmaker John Woo. Now the sequel to Mission Impossible is the follow-up to the hugely successful first film from 1996, adapting a classic 60s television series created by Bruce Geller. Now the first movie went on to be a massive blockbuster, grossing over 457.7 million worldwide. The story of the sequel focuses on the creation of a biological virus named Chimera by the pharmaceutical company known as Biosite. Carrying the antidote known as Bellerophon, scientist Dr. Vladimir Mirkovich looks to warn Ethan of the dangers of the virus. However, the doctor is intercepted by former IMF rogue agent Sean Ambrose on a plane. Ambrose obtains the Bellerophon substance and escapes the plane with his crew, killing the rest of the passengers and the doctor in the process. IMF alerts Ethan Hunt to the threat of Ambrose and assigns him to obtain both the Chimera and Bellerophon substances. In order to gain intel, Hunt must recruit professional thief Nia Norderhoff Hall, who used to be in a relationship with Ambrose. IMF hopes to use that connection to gain intel on Ambrose's intentions. Together with his team, Hunt discovers that Ambrose plans to blackmail the buy site CEO, John McCloy, into buying Bellerophon for £37 million. Hunt must go all out to stop Ambrose from obtaining both the virus and the cure and exploit them for his own gains and potentially cause an outbreak of the virus all over the world. Now when looking back on Mission Impossible 2, it's overall a very serviceable action adventure with wall to wall spectacle that's probably lessened by a more standard formulaic plot. Now whilst the first film was far closer in spirit to the spy and espionage thriller, the second film is quite the shift into the much more adrenaline, stunt packed movie blockbuster that would be more in keeping with the future installments within the franchise. The more middling and steady pace of the original is now replaced with bigger explosions, prolonged bike and car chases, a very much rock grunge soundtrack also accompanied by a typical bombastic musical score from Hans Zimmer, full of those operatic tones and high wailing vocals. Now of course the biggest reason for the shift in tone is the inclusion of revered action director John Woo. Having already built up a following with cult classics such as Hard Boiled and A Better Tomorrow, he then built up a real momentum of mainstream success with actioners such as Hard Target, Broken Arrow and the incredible Face Off which still remains one of the most exceptional action movies of the 1990s. And from the success of that movie, John Woo was given full reign to exhibit his stylistic hallmarks of extended shootouts, multiple angles and repetitive takes and manoeuvres from different vantage points. And when it's on, it works very well. In particular, we look at the shootout sequence halfway through the film at Biosite headquarters, where Ethan, in an attempt to destroy the Chimera disease, suddenly finds himself facing off against all of Ambrose and his gang. I still like the staging of this sequence, especially the music that plays in the background. Again, typical vocal orchestration from Hans Zimmer. And also when we look at the film's final 20 minutes, it is very much a John Woo exhibition of kinetic energy and elaborate stunts, and at times it's spectacle to be in awe of. But here, John Woo does tend to overindulge with all of the slow motion and the constant scenes of doves flying everywhere. We get so many slow motion sequences of whether it be Ethan walking in the streets of Sevilla, a very unnecessary chase sequence between Ethan and Naya, where the camera revolves around them constantly as they're in their cars, zooming in on their faces. We have another sequence where Naya is reuniting with Ambrose and we have a slow motion scene of her walking up to him in his lavish apartment. And these extended sequences really make you feel like you're almost watching a fashion commercial or a music video, with all of the slick transitions and glossy sheen, very much in the same style of Zack Snyder or Denis Villeneuve. And it does tend to slow down the pace of the movie, especially in the first half, making the story a bit bland and mundane. And the whole concept of the Crimea and Bellerophon just doesn't feel that particularly interesting or compelling. We never really get that true sense of suspense or tension that the first film actually did a superior job of creating. I also feel that John Woo didn't quite capture the electric execution within his action sequences that he managed previously with Face Off. 
Now in terms of the cast, all of the actors are absolutely fine in their roles. As with practically all of the Mission Impossible movies, Tom Cruise is essentially playing Tom Cruise, action star persona rather than actual character of Ethan Hunt. And this time he's much more of a one-man action superhero, taking on multiple foes single-handedly, leaping from huge skyscrapers, somersaulting and pirouetting, pulling off practically martial art moves. And again, it looks great on screen, mostly because Tom Cruise is performing the majority of his own stunts. And it does represent again the veering away from the leaner spy dynamic that we got from the first film. Now where this sequel supersedes the first film is in the role of Dougray Scott, who has enough of that stoic, very ruthless personality in the role as Ambrose to provide a very solid villainous presence this time round. And to be honest, he might probably be the best villain of the entire franchise. Fandy Newton is also very good as Naya, typically feisty and sarcastic and obviously very easy on the eye. And overall, it's a very good performance and I think she shares quite good chemistry with Cruz when they're on the screen together. And when we talk about a very good performance, we then go on to the movie's overall release. And the movie was absolutely massive at the box office, going on to gross a huge 546.4 million on a quite huge itself $120 million budget. It would go on to become the highest grossing movie of 2000, beating out the likes of Gladiator, The Grinch and Castaway. So the decision to shift to a much more explosive action epic was justified. And when we really think about it, it was this film that was the real start of the Mission Impossible franchise as we know it today, much less a contained spy thriller and much more of an amplified action blockbuster. And despite the criticism of the movie for lacking a certain substance and character development, the mainstream audiences at the time found it far more lively and exciting than the slow pace of the first film. The movie's success again solidified Tom Cruise as the top movie megastar within the industry and post this release he would go on to make some of the best movies within his career including the likes of Minority Report in 2002, The Last Samurai in 2003 and Collateral in 2004. And looking back on Mission Impossible 2, it really is the typical example of the bigger, louder, supposedly more epic sequel. But is it better than the first film? I'd say probably just about. This is probably the more watchable out of the two films. And we would definitely see an improvement in the franchise from a quality standpoint in the future installments after this release. So whilst not in the upper echelon of John Woo movies, I still reckon Mission Impossible 2 is definitely lively and entertaining enough to prove a sound watch still many years after its overall release. So those are my overall thoughts and feelings and look back on Mission Impossible 2. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Where do you think it ranks within the hierarchy of Mission Impossible movies? Do you have it right up there? Do you think it was an improvement over the first film? And how do you think it compares to the following sequels afterwards? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any other further suggestions regarding any other movies, television series, or any other issues within the pop, entertainment, and culture scene that you'd like to see me cover, then also let me know within the comments, and I will see if I can provide further commentary for you on that subject matter within the future. Please also hit and like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you very, very soon.